I extend my hearty welcome to Professor Suraj Basu, former director, Distance Education Council, Professor Manjulika Srivastava, uh, currently the director of Distance Education Council, and Professor P. P. K. Bissas, the Professor Stride Igno. Actually, the, we are assembling here to have a discussion on the role of counselor in an open and distance learning system, particularly the Krishna, related to Krishnakanda Handling State Open University. Uh, we have at the moment about 190 study centers and in all the 1990 study centers we have about 1700 counselors, mostly related to the colleges where we have these study centers. And all the counselors, including us also, we are educated in the conventional system. Normally we are acquainted with the face-to-face uh, -face type of uh, teaching learning process that since the open and distance learning is quite different from the conventional system uh, we thought that uh, we have some discussion on the role of counselors uh, in counseling the learners and so can I request uh, Professor Basu to start with what should be the basic role of the counselors and then Professor Sebastava and Professor Bissas will also uh, talk on that discussion. Thank you, uh, Professor Barwa, for inviting us in the small but beautiful studio of KK Handik State Open University to have a discussion on the role of counselors in uh, the State Open University and how they can be a better facilitator for the learners who have joined various programs of the university. Now, as you have rightly said that uh, being product of the conventional system, both the students as well as the teachers have a general tendency to have the face-to-face -face teaching to adapt when they come to the counseling centers in various study centers. Now, we have to differentiate between the classroom teaching and the counselling. Now, in any open university course, a program consists of number of courses. In your university, it is the number of papers. Yes. So, in each paper, if it is of 100 marks paper, it is generally conceived that minimum 10 to 12 counseling sessions of each counseling session minimum two to two and a half hours yes. are needed for the completion of the particular paper of 100 marks. Now what is expected to be done by the counselors in the counseling session I feel that is the question yes, before us. Now why the term counseling is used yes. as, as the uh, professor Bishwas is with us with specialization is in uh, psychology he can correct me counseling uh, originated from the discipline of psychology and where uh, the psychologist act as a counselor to the uh, people who visit uh, the psychologist to deliberate, discuss, share their problems. Mm. So that I think the basic uh, notion or idea behind adopting the terminology counseling in open and distance learning system, he can add uh, better than me on this. But what generally we understand and we explain to the counselors that uh, it is perceived that when the students come to the study center for counseling, they are expected to go through the study materials provided to the students in advance. And along with study centers, they are also provided with a program guide, which gives a broad idea of the different paper or courses in a particular program. Say, uh, in a particular counseling session, when the students come, the job of the counselors should be in the first counseling session 
to make the student familiar with the methodology of open and distance learning. What the student is expected to do in, in a counseling session, mm -hmm. what kind of problems they may face in open and distance learning system, how they try to resolve that problem and the counselor acts as a guide in the process of learning in, in the open and distance learning system. The students are expected to come with specific problems and the job of the counselor is to solve the problem in consultation with the students. The problems may be pertinent to the subject, pertinent to that particular topic, may be pertinent to the grasping of the subject yes. or particular topic that the counselor is expected to explain with uh, a lot of uh, involvement in the subject with empathy to the uh, need of the students and try to help him or her in the process so that the difficulty in the absence of the teacher in a classroom situation that the learner is facing that gets minimized. Yes, here the learners, my impression is that uh, the learners under our university in various study centers, they have a very high expectation. They assume that the teachers will come every day and take classes from 10 to 3 or 10 to 4, 4 or 5 classes every day they will take just like a conventional system. So this idea make the whole system of counseling classes problematic for the counsellors as well as for the study centre. Actually, you see in the open, in the ODN system, the academic counsellors as we call them, you know, they are all teachers from the conventional system. Mm -hmm. So, they also are not very familiar with their role as academic counsellors. You see, they have two roles to perform. Mm -hmm. They have a, uh, they have to perform the role of a tutor, that is they provide subject based expertise they should have so that they can provide tutoring support, that is academic support to the learner. Yes. And also we have induction programs where we orient the counsellors to have the humanistic qualities because mm -hmm. in, uh, in the context of education, uh, the counselling, what Professor Basu was mentioning, it is emanated from, the, uh, from psychology. But in education context, we use uh, the concept of Carl uh, Rogers. He was mm -hmm. a very famous uh, psychologist who propounded this theory of humanistic counselling. And in, in the educational context, we we follow that uh, method of counselling where the counsellor has to uh, engage the learner in problem solving approach he has mm -hmm. to adopt. Mm -hmm. And it is just not the academic uh, problems that a learner encounters, but also the personal problems that he encounters during the course of his learning endeavour. And therefore, these counselling sessions are being organised. But unfortunately, the academic counsellors, they are not very familiar with their role. Yes. So, uh, they have to be told, in fact, through the orientation program that uh, they are not supposed to transact the entire curriculum or right. that of a, of a particular course through the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. component. The face-to-face -face component is just limited to 10% of the total, you know, uh, study hours allotted to a learner. Now. I would like to explain this in the context of the credit system that yes. open universities have adopted. Uh, we follow uh, a credit system whereby the learners are you know, given the information beforehand that if they are pursuing a 6 months program, so their program will be of 12 to 16 credits yes. and one credit is actually the study input required is equal to 30 study hours. Mm -hmm. So if a learner is enrolled for a 6 month certificate program. So he will have to attend uh, that many counselling sessions, say about 12 into 30 hours will be around 360 study hours is the input required which yeah. includes not only his going through the material, uh, writing the notes in the course material, you know. That is the, the total number of hours he has to engage yeah, for to the study. Yeah, to write the assignments, the exactly. And 10% of that 360 hours is allotted to the face to face component. So if you see 360 means 36 hours. Yes. So 36 hours will again get reduced to, will be divided among a number of sessions. Yes. Uh, according to the number of courses, mm -hmm. the sessions will be allotted and they mm -hmm. will be equally distributed. So uh, 
we have you know we i mean so therefore the number of sessions is very limited the counselor cannot transact the entire yeah, curriculum it is not possible in those 36 hours that is 360 hours of you know is not possible to be uh, you know they cannot do justice to a particular program mm -hmm. by uh, providing them lectures and what happens the learners also the kind of background they come from they are we belong you know in our culture we are used to that spoon feeding yes the learners expect everything from the teacher and I think I don't blame them because they are quite unfamiliar with the mm. ODL methodology of teaching learning and I think that is why uh, induction program is necessary for the learners so that they know what is expected of them as a distance learner. So, so to, uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you like to suggest to the counsellors that they, at the beginning of the, any academic session, they will have the induct, induction yes. classes to the new learners? No, in fact, uh, we, we should make it compulsory mm -hmm. that uh, at when, the, uh, when a new academic session starts, all the new entrants should be invited to an induction program at the study centre. Mm -hmm. Study centre is the place where all the face-to-face -face yes. counselling sessions are conducted. And at these sessions, uh, maybe one person from the headquarters should be ideally present and all the counsellors. So that there can be also an um, ice-breaking counselling session can be held immediately after the inauguration. Yes. And in the ice-breaking session, which is a very important session when we start this uh, new program, then the academic counsellor will meet the students because you see, counselling is again not a compulsory component. Mm -hmm. So there is another side to the story. When it is not compulsory, there, there will be a situation when students may not attend the counselling yeah, sessions. There is a tendency to... Yes, yeah, for students not to attend counselling sessions. Mm -hmm. That is equally uh, demotivating for the counsellors who with lot of enthusiasm opt for taking up this part-time assignment at KK Handi Gopal University. They want to take up counselling activity but when they don't have any learners coming for their class for these face-to-face -face sessions, they get very de demotivated. So at this ice-breaking session, the counsellors can be, you know, given this, uh, they can impart the basic uh, knowledge to the learners that how they are going to transact the you know, mm -hmm. curriculum in this 10% uh, of the total study, uh, what we are discussing now. If this can be told to the learners at the very beginning and what they should do to come prepared for the counselling sessions and counsellors can then, you know, I mean the learners would know what they are supposed to do, the counsellors would also be you know accordingly they will prepare themselves because even the counselors as you rightly pointed out they do not know they just come and give lectures because they do yes. not know what are the techniques now these counseling sessions can be handled in a very different manner from a face-to-face -face classroom mm -hmm. situation which the conventional teachers are used to there the students can be uh, they have to conduct lot of group based activities mm -hmm. because what is the role of the counseling session the role of the counselling session is to help the uh, learner interact with the course material. Yes. That is the basic purpose. And how they are going to make the learner interact with the course material is the purpose of the counselling session. And the counsellor is a medium. Mm -hmm. So if the counsellor has to do that, he should know what are the techniques. Yes. So normally what we do is we, uh, in the orientation for the academic counsellors, we uh, give them, we in fact have mock counselling sessions in the as part of that orientation where we train them and we tell them that what are the techniques they can use for counselling the distance learners. I think Professor Biswas yes. would like to share this, his experiences so, about what are yes. the techniques they can use for... Uh, and also some positive side and negative side of the yeah. counsellors. So I just, uh, since Professor Biswas is an expert in the particular area, that regarding you also uh, put, give some highlight on the counsellor's role in the evaluation of the assignment. That is also very important. Uh, definitely. Uh, we'll come to the evaluation part later yes. on. Uh, before that, taking clue from uh, Professor Basu and Professor Sivastov's uh, uh, presentations. Now, I can say that uh, I can give some tips to the counsellors mm -hmm. how they can manage the counselling sessions because it has been told that uh, counselling is not tutoring. And it is very much true, counselling is not tutoring. The counsellor's task is to provide information at the time, at the time of provide guidance and to help the learners uh, to learn how to learn in the yes. system. That is the thing, how to learn. They help the learner to develop study skills and they help the learners to 
uh, learn time management skills. So this kind of skills they can help the learner to develop during counseling sessions also. So some tips I like to give the counselors, uh, specific counseling sessions. They sh first thing is that they should create a positive and friendly environment. A friendly environment because from psychological point of view I'm telling because the distance learners they have a different kind of psychology when they're coming to yes. the session but we know what is ODL system and we know how to uh, uh, tackle the students in the counseling sessions but they will expect something as you told at the beginning they expect something but we are going to give them something so there is a class between yes. their expectations and our giving so they should create a positive friendly impressions and then what the students will feel, the students will feel that, uh, they'll understand that yes, the counselor is with him if you created this kind of environment. Then you establish rapport and show empathy. Professor Basu used the word empathy, it's a very important thing, that you feel the way the learners feel. Then you uh, build up your counseling sessions. And you reassure the students about the system and you tell that this is a system, if you uh, follow the uh, guidelines given by us, you will definitely will be able to do better in the system so students will feel that yes we understand them and we we care for them mm -hmm. if we show this kind of behavior then I will suggest the counselors to be a very active listeners because they should listen first from the students they should not start uh, giving lectures and whatever they know but they should listen first they should ask them the questions that uh, what is the problem they are facing and they should acknowledge their uh, stand and to become an active listener they should develop some kind of skills. Mm -hmm. To become active listeners, first they should acknowledge what the students wants to convey. Then they confirm. There are various ways to confirm it. Acknowledge and confirm that yes, they can say yes, I am listening to you. They can nod the heads. They can uh, they can say something yes, yes, really as you are as you are doing yes. when I am talking to you or sometimes telling yes. And this, this is called acknowledgement and confirming that what I am telling. That means you are an active listener at this moment. That they also should follow the same procedure. And they ask. And clarifications from the students also if they don't understand what the students want to convey they can ask for clarifications now through this activity what will happen the psychology event is that students can develop his or her own thinking and they may be willing to act independently if you go on like this then the most important thing is to provide information related to the content and visual aids, use of visual aids is very much important. Most yes. of the counseling sessions, the counselors, they don't use any visual aids. They just uh, uh, deliver lectures. But we suggest that you use visual aids as much as possible. And when you ask the questions to the students, ask the relevant questions only. And you allow the students to ask questions also. Yes. That is also very much. It should be totally interactive sessions, yes. not the lecturing, interactive sessions. And encourage the learners for group discussions. Encourage the learners for debate. Yes, yes, that, encourage uh, the learner is, for uh, yes, uh, Professor Sivasu was telling. Yeah. Encourage the yeah. learner for brainstorming. Yes. This kind of debate. Debate is very important. You give the topic and tell them you debate. You just observe. Then you give your comments. Also, you can yeah. have these panel discussions. Panel discussions, group discussions. You can have brainstorming sessions. You can go for another technique, snowballing techniques. Small two persons can discuss something. Then another two persons can join in these bus sessions. Can, bus sessions. So, so many techniques are there. So that can be, uh, uh, that the counselors can be trained in, independently, but they should know that, that there are various techniques that there. They can use the techniques depending on the uh, learner target group and discipline also. Yes. That is very important. And the counselors all the time should provide the feedback during the counseling sessions also. That is also very important. I have talked about study skills. They should give them some tips how to develop the study skills, how they can study because self-learning material is already there. Yeah. That is the teacher's activities and functions are inbuilt features of SLM. So there is no need to uh, explain it again and again. Only the difficult points and how to go about it, that should be the task of the uh, counselors. Actually, all of you are suggesting that the main role should be a guide. That the role of a yeah. counselor should be a guide to the student, not only the guide of the academic matters, the other matters also. How to study yes. and uh, difficult concept clarification that is also there, but mm -hmm. said how to study. Yes. So they should be the independent learner, yes. that is the main purpose. To Sir, actually you see counselling for the counselor, he has to do academic counselling, that is subject yes. related, personal counselling which will be individual related. Mm -hmm. And third is administrative. You mm -hmm. see, there are admin that is called non-academic counselling, mm -hmm. where there could be problems related to non-receipt of materials, yes, exactly. or assignment grades have not been, you know, uh, I mean, incorporated in the grade sheet. Mm -hmm. So where will the learner go? The learner will go to the counsellor because yes. the counsellor is the face of the university for the learner. 
you see he's the he or she is the only person with whom the learner interacts mm-hmm. when i mean the purpose of providing local support is opening study centers and appointing counselors mm-hmm. there so the counselor has to be fully familiar with the system. entire system yes it's just not that he is a subject expert and um, he just and knows that and that's lecture, that is no somebody who that is why an orientation program for the counselor is necessary so that they get familiar with the entire setup how the university functions and also uh, they should be uh, you know provided with latest updates mm-hmm. about the university and we can also uh, in, uh, inform these counselors that simply uh, going to face to face session the counseling doesn't end there mm-hmm. because there could be some learners who are very busy and the timings may not suit them mm-hmm. but in the first induction meeting when they meet the counselor the counselor may uh, should provide all kind of Uh, you know channels of communication like mm-hmm. provide their own mobile numbers yes. and uh, so that there can be communication should be kept alive between the students and the counselor mm-hmm. just because a person doesn't attend the face to face session that means he has no uh, you know support yes. you see in the in an educational uh, exp- you know to make an educational program a complete educational experience a good experience for the learner there has to be avenues for interaction between the teacher and the taught and also uh, some kind of a feedback on performance so what is suggest that we can also use the technology yes Suppose exactly some learner cannot come say walking in some office some learner may not be able to come or be some yeah, it's possible. they can be in so touch with with the counselor yes. using the telephone or email, email. 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 yes now one problem for us a basu what i feel it here, here not only in the odl system in the regular system if you ask a student a question then they never open their mouth okay, so answer. here here also in the odl system even if the counselor asks the learners to get prepared himself or herself before the counseling class and we tell them to ask questions to the counselor but they never ask it so what will be the role of the counselor how they will get uh, the a uh, mind of the learners exactly that is what professor sarvasta professor vishas all have pointed out mm-hmm. the first lesson start with the counselor yes. he has to understand how his role is different from the role of a teacher, teacher in yes. a conventional system that is the first mm-hmm. then he has to understand the functioning of the open and distance learning system and more particularly the informations relevant for the learners in the particular open university mm-hmm. and third the question that you have put that when the students are not coming forward yes because the students should also try to learn how the students in open and distance learning is different from the students in a regular system yes, exactly. so there the role of the counselor ideally should be as they have suggested that there are the different techniques in the if suppose i am the counselor to mm-hmm. a particular course in the first session i would try to explain first my role yes first then what the university is expected to do in this particular program for facilitating the learning and then third how the learner in open and distance learning is different from the regular yes. students mm-hmm. then i would try to create an interest among them by suggesting different devices mm-hmm. as they says that it can be in the form of a debate it can be in the form of a group discussion it can be in the uh, form of a competition among the learners giving 5 10 minutes time to speak on that particular area and then as had been said that the counselor has to be a very good listener mm-hmm. observing the individual students responding to this he or she should be able to identify the weaknesses or the strengths in different learners and accordingly try to motivate or integrate them in the counseling sessions yes. it's a very difficult proposition but there is no uh, easy way out depending on a particular situation the counselor has to be innovative and has to uh, come out with situation specific solution mm-hmm. focusing on the goal is to 
teach or her job is to facilitate the learning yes. so that the learners do not face the difficulty in understanding that particular concept that particular things for which the counseling is conducted so can i add something yes, from my yes, experience definitely, definitely. like you see i have also uh, worked as an academic counselor for igno mm-hmm. uh, when i joined in the regional center and i felt that we are doing so much of orientation program for the counselor so let me also take some sessions and mm-hmm. actually demonstrate to them that how effective a counseling session can be so i took up uh, there is a foundation course in humanities and social sciences where there is a very large enrollment because it's a compulsory course for yes. the undergraduate level so the learners who came were a mixed group totally heterogeneous some were comp- were total dropouts from the conventional system they never got admission so they were a younger age group mm-hmm. then there were people who were very uh, i mean elderly who had not uh, gone to college for Mm-hmm. their own personal socio economic reasons and now they want to get back to their studies and they were working people but yes. who wanted to improve their career prospects so there was a and there were a, another category were housewives who to improve their social mobility or you know to come up in society they were wanting to be graduates so they were all and there were some very old people who it was their life dream to become a graduate and they you know retired people so they, we had you can say practically all age groups of people were in this program i mean this particular course whom i had to handle so when i met them so the first session as i said is very important the ice breaking session and in that session i did not even i mean my basic purpose of that ice breaking was to build the confidence of the learner in me i mean yes. they should look up to me as a counselor so i tried to extract as much information about each and any every individual learner that was my job so what i did was i conducted a snowballing session mm-hmm. now in that snowballing session i divided the there were around 45 participants i remember 45 46 i mean the sessions after that became even more because when they see that the counselor is you know there is some activity going on definitely people will by word of mouth it spreads and people come for the next session so in the first session there were around 45 46 people so i divided them into pairs mm-hmm. and then i asked each pair i gave them a, a a specific task i said i want i give you 5 minutes and each pair has to tell i mean about you know firstly because i wanted to find out the background yes and the motivation of the learner because that's very important to understand the learner so i found, i made them find out very specific questions that what was the educational background with what purpose they have taken this program very simple questions and if they have any major achievements to their credit you know in many field so in this way i and then uh, the pairs exchanged the information with the other pair and then i made it an open house mm-hmm. and i asked like a has to inform the whole group about b and b will inform about a mm-hmm. because you know it, it's easier for another for the for another person to blow the trumpet for you you know yes. nobody likes to blow their own trumpet so in this way i think within half an hour we all got to know each other very well i mean that whole ice breaking session was so successful then then i told them what is the role of uh, this purpose of this counseling sessions and how they should come Mm-hmm. believe me in the first session the attendance grew because you know then people realize that something special happens here mm-hmm. so they came in the next session and in the next session when they came i realized that although i had given them a task i said everybody must bring their course material this particular block i should see everybody has brought that block and you should have read that block and come yes. and as you have pointed out this was my experience also nobody went through the material mm-hmm. i mean hardly one or two mm-hmm. and most of them because they thought that you know we are paying for this this face to face session is there so why should we read we will be you know spoon fed mm-hmm. you know that is the psychology of the learners so when they came so i i asked them and they were very frank about it many of them said we thought madam when we come here you will only give us some inputs and that will you know be keep us on track i said see i have come here to help you to facilitate your learning and how will you learn unless you open the materials yes. you know you have to interact with this material and unless you do that you will never learn anything and this material is not for decoration to be kept on your shelves at home yes so what i did was i made them open I, what i did i do again divided them into six groups 
because everybody is you know all the learners because seeing their background i knew what kind of background all of them have and some of them are bold enough to speak most of them lacked confidence because mm. you see as i told you the kind of background of the learners so when i divided them into groups i only made the groups and i saw to it that one confident person was there as a group leader because people are very reticent to you know express themselves in a big forum like this because they've never been exposed mm-hmm. and as it is uh, some of them were quite under confident and as professor biswas said there are some people who don't even have any study skills left because yes. they come back to education after several years after a gap and uh, so what we did was then i gave them a task a specific task i picked on one unit each group was given one unit now in that block i think there were six or seven units or maybe five or six units now i don't remember but the task i assigned was each group was given one unit to make a concept map of the unit mm-hmm. so what happened all the members who they had anyway brought all the materials that was sure they brought so it was very easy they all opened that particular unit and they were forced to go through the contents and then at the end of the uh, i mean at the end of half because you see we have more than 2 hours at our disposal how to make use of that is not you know people as you said many of them don't ask any questions they mm-hmm. do not know and they have not read what will they ask so in this way we gave them 45 minutes to go through the uh, each group went through one unit and then after that we had group presentations naturally the boldest person i had made him the group leader and then the group leader made a presentation of so what happened all the groups became familiar with the entire course material yes. 80 pages was reduced to just 80 minutes you can say in 80 mm-hmm. minutes everybody knew what this whole block contained yes. so like this when i made the students aware that you see you can you have to interact with the material only then you will be able to answer your assignments they understood the value and then they look forward to what would be the next activity madam in the mm-hmm. next session Yes. So, so the point in in brief, Professor Manjulika, what you have narrated is, and what you have been discussing is that the counselor is expected to think of innovative okay. ways of yeah. engaging the learner. Mm-hmm. So that the job of the counselor to decide yeah. that you cannot always suggest that you uh, cannot always through a manual or guide book give to the counselors. as a teacher with experience and seeing the learners and understanding the system it becomes essential for the counselors to understand its role and how to make the counseling session more interactive so that the learners take interest in attending the yes. session so finally the professor bisas he just very briefly he just given advice to the counselors so that the counseling can be made very effective just very briefly yeah and uh, then we'll i uh, whatever points i have told i am not going to repeat it what the counselors must do in the counseling sessions uh, now i can uh, with that i can add something the word counselor should not do because you talked about that the students they are sometimes they are hesitant to ask the questions yeah. because they they when they come to the counseling sessions they bring their background because in the school years maybe they have not asked a single questions or they may not be allowed to ask the questions and i think this is a uh, right what i'm telling because i have conducted a uh, number of workshops with the students in northeast regions all the eight states and i have seen the students told me after the workshop before the workshop also that we have never interacted with the teacher teacher never allowed us to ask questions just they came to the class and they have given lecture and gone back so that is the situation even a 36 years old lady told me this is the first time i am interacting with the teacher and with yes. the uh, with the microphone so that was the situation so then what i uh, suggest is that they should remove the barriers of good communication because if you want to communicate with the learners in the counseling sessions that which is must you have to remove the barriers and what are the barriers the counselors will have to think about they should come with a positive attitude they should not show any negative attitude they should be a active listeners as i told active listeners they should yes. listen they should motivate the learners to ask again and again and if they are poor listeners then definitely the students will not uh, the students will think the teacher is not listening to me why i why i ask the questions so that is very important and they should allow the students to ask the questions again and again if you ask now one uh, interesting uh, technique is there you ask the students a question 
the answer with the questions, uh, uh, the answer is known to the students. Yes. You know that students can answer that questions. The, that questions you ask uh, the student. A very first sessions, few sessions. Don't ask any questions which the students cannot answer. Exactly. Because the students cannot answer very first time, they will not ask any questions. That is the thing. So, yeah, so, so you mean to say that the easy question, easy question the, the part that counselor will, will have to see. ask the learners. Counselor will have so to select. They, yeah. they, will, they will have more confidence in yes. answering. Yes. You should know that that answer the, the students would be able to give. That question is only you ask. Yeah. Then they will be uh, motivated and they will say okay. And then you say the very good, very good. You say that give reinforcement. So next time they will ask the questions. There yes. are techniques. This is one technique I am talking about. So students will feel safe and respected also. Mm -hmm. The teacher is giving me a uh, very good uh, uh, response. And one thing I'll say that uh, counselors sometimes I have observed that they dwell on uh, their own difficulties sometimes. Yes. Because all the counselors are not perfect. They dwell on their own difficulties. That should not be the, uh, uh, that they should not do that. Actually, if there are some difficulties, maybe environmental difficulties, infrastructure, whatever may be, they should try to manage that things. They should not show through their behavior that I am facing the difficulties. They should behave like that. No, everything is very comfortable situations. And they should not neglect the students' concern. Mm -hmm. The students have some concern. Sometimes the counselors think that no, this is not my. Uh, I will not discuss this. This is not part. These you go to the university and ask the administration and this yes. and that. that Sometimes they bypass. Be, that, 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 that attitude should not be there. All the time they should uh, give attention to the students' concern. Otherwise, the students will withdraw. So mm -hmm. you know, if it happens again and again, they will withdraw. And uh, they should not avoid the students any areas, actually the painful areas I am talking about. Say, for example, you are talking about the evolution of assignments also. Yes. Uh, so the assignments marks is not good or sometimes maybe seen that he has approached to somebody but he has not got the actual answers. So maybe he has been suffering from some psychological uh, problems also. That kind of thing should not be avoided. This should be tackled in a very uh, uh, friendly manner. That, that should be the approach. What uh, one can do is, um, I mean, the, the the program coordinator yes. can also devise <coughs> some guidelines for the counselors regarding the treatment of the subject, mm -hmm. how to be, how it should be meted out in the counseling sessions, and that is what we did. If you remember, Professor, oh, that can be done seminar. by our university also. Yes, in yes. fact, that, that is what I did. Like I was coordinating a course in uh, in Itnu, uh, when I was in Stride. So for my particular course. I devised a whole mechanism that so many blocks, how, what kind of treatment has to be met out to certain mm -hmm. areas, like what techniques can be used. Yes. So, uh, what we, uh, what I did in a workshop in YCMOU, now the YCMOU has made a manual, subject specific manual for each and every counsellor mm -hmm. based on this workshop. Yes. And they have translated <coughs> this idea into reality. They have mentioned, they have even, uh, it's just not a general counseling manual. It's a manual for each and every course. They mm -hmm. tell them that how to, what techniques can be used. Because see, in a course you can identify which are the hard spots. Yes. Which are the important areas that have been, that need to be covered. And ours is an examination oriented system. Mm -hmm. We should not forget that. I mean, we do depend a lot on examinations for evaluating the performance of a learner. So definitely learners are also looking at everything from that examination point of view also yes. and also from the learning point of view. So, such kind of manual has been prepared based on my ideas. Yeah, I, th I think it's a very good idea and uh, definitely our university can make this. Uh, so, this one workshop in YCU yes. resulted in this manual and they are very happy now with this approach. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a blank, it's not, there's no blanket solution, but then you, uh, each subject expert can identify yes. the important portions of the course and guide the counsellor that what method will be best suited to make the activity more interesting and inculcate learning yes. and learning good learning environment for the learners. Mm -hmm. You know, presuming that learners have read or not read, but we ensure that the learners learn something in the counsellor yes, right. through this method. So, thank you very much, uh, all, all uh, this uh, professors from IGNO and also the Director of Distance Education Council. So, we are very grateful to all of you for sharing your views, particularly advices given to the counsellors to make the counselling session effective. So, with these words, we thank you all of you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.